when New York Times is talking about that Ukraine is losing, do you think that the United States, deep state, those people who are, we can call it deep state or kind of blocks, have decided to change their strategy in Ukraine? Well, that implies that there was a strategy to begin with. I think the only strategy that they've had is a reactive strategy uh, that's premised on uh, an absurd notion that the United States will use this conflict to weaken Russia and achieve the strategic defeat of Russia. Um, you know, a hope and a dream. Um, but there's nothing substantive behind that. We don't back it up with the resources. That's truly what we wanted. Uh, we aren't giving them the resources. We should be doubling down on Ukraine, pouring in uh, munitions and, uh, and, and, and you know, when they need it on a timely fashion, more air defense, things of that nature. That's truly what we wanted, but we've just sort of been feeding it in there because <coughs> we're trying to win on the cheap. We're, we're, we're praying for some sort of economic collapse in Russia. It's just not happening. In Ukraine, the conscription issue has emerged as one of the most contentious and sensitive topics impacting society, especially among men aged 25 to 60. This subject is not just about fulfilling civic duties. It taps into deeper anxieties, fears, and perceptions of fairness within the country. For many, speaking openly about conscription is fraught with risks. The reality is that a single outspoken opinion can lead to serious repercussions, such as receiving a formal notice from the defense ministry or worse, facing on the spot detentions by recruiting officers on the streets. These officers deployed with the specific aim of identifying eligible recruits, operate in public spaces, adding an ever present tension to daily life. The Ukrainian government's decision to lower the conscription age from 27 to 25 has only heightened these MPs concerns this policy shift means that more young men are now part of the conscription pool, extending the reach of military obligations to a larger segment of the population. This has sparked debates not just about the ethics of enforced military service, but also about the overall readiness of Ukraine's youth to commit to prolonged periods of conflict. Inspector Scott Ritter has observed these developments closely, emphasizing that the policy's effect on public sentiment is profound. The sense of unease among the public has grown, and this is especially palpable in urban areas where security presence is highly visible. For families, the potential of losing a father, son, or brother to the front lines has become a haunting reality. This pervasive atmosphere fuels not only anxiety, but also a simmering frustration that occasionally surfaces in hushed conversations and veiled criticisms. As Ukraine grapples with internal pressures, the external front remains equally challenging where troop numbers and military capability continue to be tested. The Ukrainian armed forces are under immense pressure, facing a relentless cycle of deployment and combat that stretches resources and personnel to their limits. Many frontline units, particularly those positioned in eastern and southern Ukraine, have been engaged in continuous combat operations since the spring of 2022. This grueling schedule leaves little room for rest, rotation, or strategic pauses, compounding both physical and mental exhaustion among soldiers. Unlike other national militaries, Ukraine's lack of a structured discharge or rotation system means that enlistment often feels like a one-way commitment. This lack of reprieve has led to a noticeable decline in morale among troops who have endured extended tours of duty without the promise of relief. Soldiers return to the front lines battle-worn and weary, reinforcing an operational cycle that strains the human and logistical capacity of the military. The toll extends beyond the battlefield, Families of soldiers also bear the burden of uncertainty, not knowing if their loved ones will return or when they might see them next. Reports indicate that the cycle of redeployment has affected recruitment as well, with fewer individuals willing to volunteer for service when they know that the path may not include a defined endpoint. This continuous demand for manpower has also influenced domestic policy and public opinion. Images of worn out soldiers in defensive positions entrenched in makeshift bunkers highlight the intensity of the situation. Even basic supplies like food, medical kits, and warm clothing for the colder months are in short supply. The wear and tear on equipment further complicates operations, requiring more frequent repairs and replacements. As these challenges persist, the imbalance between Ukraine's strained resources and Russia's larger military capacity becomes ever more apparent. The sheer numerical advantage that Russia holds over Ukraine presents a formidable challenge. Russia's active military personnel is estimated at around 1.5 million troops, a significant lead compared to Ukraine's approximate 900,000, a number that includes both standing forces and reserves. This disparity becomes even more pronounced when considering Russia's mobilization capabilities and external support. Reports suggest that North Korea has bolstered Russian ranks by sending 3,000 troops to the battlefield, 
with an additional 12,000 currently undergoing training to join future operations. These reinforcements provide Russia with an ability to sustain prolonged operations, apply pressure across multiple fronts, and potentially open new lines of attack. The integration of these troops allows for rotation, giving Russian units more flexibility and stamina in contrast to their Ukrainian counterparts who face continuous deployment. Moreover, the strategic deployment of fresh troops provides Russia with an operational depth that Ukraine struggles to match. From a logistical standpoint, Russia's infrastructure supports a steady flow of supplies and troop movements, a benefit reinforced by its larger population base, which is over three times that of Ukraine. This advantage extends to reserve forces and the capacity to train and deploy new recruits rapidly. For Ukraine, mobilizing additional troops often means drawing from a population that is already stretched thin, with many potential conscripts already contributing to vital civilian and economic roles. Uh, Inspector Scott Ritter has noted how this manpower gap significantly impacts the balance of power shaping not just current engagements, but also the strategic outlook for future military operations. The disparity underscores the challenges faced by Ukraine as it seeks to hold the line and reclaim contested territories under these conditions. As the numbers weigh in Russia's favor, Ukraine's domestic and international strategies are put to the test to maintain resilience. Facing a pressing need to bolster its military ranks, Ukraine has launched an extensive media and recruitment campaign aimed at energizing enlistment among young men. The streets of major cities are now lined with billboards showcasing soldiers standing proudly under slogans of patriotism and duty Subways, once filled with advertisements for consumer goods, now feature recruitment ads urging young men to take up arms for the defense of their country. Cafes and bars, social hubs where conversations often steer toward the war, now play host to digital displays promoting military service, promising that volunteers can choose units that best match their skills and preferences. However, despite the visually arresting campaigns and the offer of signing bonuses reaching up to 150,000 Ukrainian hryvnias, approximately $3,600 USD, the response has been tepid at best. Public sentiment remains deeply divided. Many Ukrainians weary from nearly three years of war and the constant strain it places on daily life view the government's recruitment drive with skepticism. The introduction of a military tax increase, now standing at 5%, has also fueled frustration among citizens already grappling with economic challenges. This measure, intended to sustain the war effort, weighs heavily on households trying to cope with inflation and the general economic downturn. Inspector Scott Ritter has pointed out that these recruitment tactics, while necessary, reveal the deeper struggles faced by Ukraine's leadership. The government's attempt to project unity and resilience often clashes with the lived experiences of the people. For some, the advertisements are a stark reminder of the friends and family members who have already been called to serve, many of whom may never return. For others, especially the younger generation, the recruitment push adds a layer of anxiety about being thrust into the conflict, disrupting plans for education and careers. Public response is also influenced by the visible divide in the socio-economic landscape. While some sectors of society see military service as a form of patriotic duty, others perceive it as an unavoidable burden. This polarization is evident in public spaces where discussions about enlistment often shift to quieter tones when recruitment officers are present, underscoring the tension in urban life. With national recruitment efforts ramping up and public sentiment divided, the political scene in Ukraine faces potential shifts that could redefine its leadership and strategy. Amid the strain of sustained conflict, Ukraine's political landscape is facing potential upheaval. President Volodymyr Zelensky, whose term officially ended in May 2024, continues to wield considerable wartime powers under the guise of national security. The ongoing state of martial law, enacted due to the protracted conflict with Russia, has postponed democratic processes, including presidential elections. This extension of power has caught the attention of international allies, including the United States, which has been a significant supporter of Ukraine throughout the conflict. Washington's concerns over Zelensky's extended control have fueled discussions about possible shifts in Ukrainian leadership. US officials have expressed unease over the centralization of authority, especially as it pertains to democratic principles reports suggest that American policymakers are evaluating potential alternatives to maintain influence in Ukraine's future government. Inspector Scott Ritter, an experienced observer of military and geopolitical strategy, has indicated that such international maneuvering could reshape Ukraine's path forward, raising questions about sovereignty and external influence. Compounding this complexity, Russia's foreign intelligence agency, SVR, 
has released statements suggesting that U.S.-Dash back non-governmental organizations, NGOs are quietly laying the groundwork for a shift in power. According to the SVR, these NGOs aim to support the formation of a pro-American political party capable of contesting in parliamentary elections slated for 2025. The underlying strategy, as seen by Russian analysts, is to shape Ukrainian politics in a way that aligns with American strategic interests. This maneuvering hints at broader implications for Ukraine's autonomy. If successful, the establishment of a new political faction could introduce significant changes in Ukraine's alliances and military strategies, especially if Western influence continues to push for reforms tied to aid and support. Visuals of U.S. Envoy's meeting with Ukrainian officials and the frequent discussions about military and economic aid underscore the deep entanglement of international interests in the region. The potential political shift highlights the delicate balance Ukraine must maintain between defending its sovereignty and navigating the complex web of international support and expectations. With a new American administration on the horizon, the stakes are set to change. President-elect Donald Trump's campaign promises to end the conflict within 24 hours have already sparked speculation about what a peace deal might look like and how it would reshape the U.S.-Ukraine relationship. Meanwhile, Russia watches closely, positioning itself to respond to any political or military recalibration in Kyiv. As these political dynamics play out on the global stage, Ukraine's military and civilian populations brace for the ongoing challenges that define their nation's fight for stability. October marked a pivotal month in the ongoing conflict, with Ukrainian forces suffering substantial territorial losses estimated at 620 square kilometers, particularly around the embattled Donetsk region. This represents the largest monthly loss since the full-scale conflict reignited in 2022. These setbacks reveal not just isolated challenges, but broader vulnerabilities in Ukraine's defense strategy. Russian forces, emboldened by a steady influx of reinforcements and a fortified supply chain, have leveraged their numerical and logistical advantages to push deeper into contested areas. The rapid Russian advancements were not without calculated intent. Strategic points in Donetsk hold significant value due to their locaten, offering both military and symbolic gains. The ability of Russian forces to consolidate these newly captured territories provides them with advantageous positions for launching further operations, deepening Ukraine's defensive dilemmas. Reports from the front lines describe well-coordinated assaults supported by a combination of heavy artillery and mechanized units, which have been critical in breaking through fortified Ukrainian positions. Ukrainian soldiers on the ground have faced mounting pressure as they fight to maintain control. Defensive measures, despite the commitment and resilience shown, have been strained by extended rotations and depleted resources. For Ukraine, the challenge remains to prevent further encroachments while mobilizing reinforcements swiftly enough to plug defensive gaps. As territorial control shifts in the front lines are redrawn, attention turns to the economic and logistical constraints affecting both sides of this protracted conflict. Beyond the battlefield, economic and logistical challenges continue to test the resolve of both Ukraine and Russia. In Ukraine, the financial strain is palpable. The government has imposed a defense tax that has now risen to 5%, burdening citizens already grappling with inflation and a war economy. For many Ukrainians, this tax represents yet another sacrifice as they try to balance daily living expenses with patriotic duty. The pressure to maintain military expenditures has placed an undeniable strain on the nation's budget, compelling officials to seek additional international aid, which is not guaranteed, Meanwhile, Russia, despite holding a more advantageous position in terms of resources, is not immune to the repercussions of prolonged conflict. Rising inflation and international sanctions have placed new burdens on its economy. While Russian industrial sectors have adapted to prioritize military production, keeping supply lines operational and maintaining troop readiness requires immense financial and logistical input. This dual challenge of sustaining combat operations while managing domestic economic stability remains a delicate balancing act for Moscow. Both nations face distinct, yet overlapping challenges Ukraine's reliance on external financial support and the resilience of its workforce, versus Russia's need to counteract the economic impact of sanctions while reinforcing its supply chains. Analysts suggest that these economic pressures could play a decisive role in shaping military strategies and outcomes as the conflict drags on. These economic realities set the stage for geopolitical maneuvering, particularly as the U.S approaches a new presidential term that could shift the dynamics of international support. 
As the United States prepares for a new presidential term, the implications for Ukraine and the broader conflict are significant. Former President Donald Trump's campaign promise to end the Ukraine conflict within 24 hours has stirred both anticipation and uncertainty. While Trump's statements have been met with skepticism regarding how such a resolution would unfold, they have also sparked serious discussions within Ukraine's leadership about potential shifts in U.S. policy. The prospect of a reduction in NATO support or decreased military aid has led to speculation about alternative strategies Kyiv might need to consider, including potential diplomatic overtures with Moscow. For Ukrainian officials, any alteration in U.S. support could mean recalibrating their current approach to the war. President Volodymyr Zelensky and his advisors face the complex task of preparing for scenarios that could range from continued strong support under the current administration to a more restrained engagement under Trump. The balance of power on the ground and in diplomatic arenas could change dramatically based on Washington's stance. Meanwhile, Russia watches these developments with interest, recognizing that a shift in U.S. leadership could provide an opportunity to press its own terms or recalibrate its military and political strategies. Analysts speculate that any pivot in American policy could embolden Russia to negotiate from a position of strength, reshaping the conflict's trajectory and influencing broader geopolitical alliances in Europe and beyond. With potential shifts in U.S. policy and their cascading effects on the ground, the coming months will be pivotal in determining the trajectory of this enduring conflict. With winter fast approaching, Ukraine braces for a season of heightened military and economic strain, while Russia capitalizes on recent battlefield momentum. The timeline remains uncertain, but the strategic calculations on both sides underscore a complex conflict with far-reaching implications. Inspector Scott Ritter has noted that these developments could signal pivotal moments that define the conflict's trajectory in the coming months. As the conflict enters yet another chapter, both sides appear resolute, yet public opinion on each front reveals contrasting sentiments toward what lies ahead. Stay with us for continued, in-depth coverage as this conflict unfolds through the winter months and into the geopolitical landscape of the future.